Hello. Wow, what a crazy couple days. Hi, friends. Um, I apologize. Last time I did this, I hope it's not happening again. Last time I did this, for some reason, it didn't record my audio in the beginning. So that's why if you joined um, or, or watched the YouTube video, it just kind of like cut immediately to the, the discussion. I had like a whole speech in the beginning and none of it saved. So I'm hoping that's the case, too. I really want to cover up this behemoth on my forehead because I feel like it's all I can see. Just a little dot. There we go. So um, as you guys know at this point, Hurricane Helene blew through North Carolina and um, fortunately where I'm at is good. Um, we lost power for like a day and a half and um, had to throw away all our groceries, but whatever. That's okay. That's just stuff. Um, however, Western North Carolina has has been underwater and will be for the foreseeable future, and it's been absolutely devastating. Um, Asheville is about 90 miles west of me, and my sister is in Boone right now, which is... I'm wearing my Boone shirt tonight. Um, she is safe as well, but without power, that was too much. I could use some under my eyes. I have not showered. Um, when we got power yesterday, I was so tired that I just did not take one when I should have. Um, oh my god, this looks terrible. <laughs> um, and so I've just, I don't know. And then I've been cleaning the fridge out and finally doing dishes and laundry and all that and I got so sweaty and the next thing I know it's time for book club so I've just been all over the place um but we are discussing <laughs> more excitingly maybe my favorite book this year so far I loved Cannibalism by Bill Shutt uh this was so much fun this was oh I forgot I have to respond to my hubby one second Going to book club. BRB book club. Um, and I'll talk more about the fundraiser that I'm doing for Western North Carolina right now, probably when the Zoom meeting starts because I'll mention it then. But this was so much fun. I learned so much and I this this like destigmatized the whole idea and concept of cannibalism and it was just so fascinating to me and the routes that he took and all the different facets of cannibalism that he explored to me was just so fascinating and the placenta chapter that's what solidified the five star for me for sure and then of course i did do my podcast episode with bill shut and that was so so much fun um he's great and according to him cannibalism um sorry placentas taste great with chianti so you know what i had to do I had to go give me a bottle of Chianti. I think Chianti I tried not recently, so I didn't really remember what it tasted like. Can confirm. It's delicious. Um, I love a red, so it's very dry. Big fan. Mm. I also, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know anything about wine other than it has alcohol in it. It's pretty good. I'm going to light up a candle really quick to make it smell good in here. So we stayed the night that Helene Helene kind of hit us between 5 a.m and noon Friday and so we live in a trailer currently because we're about to buy a home and um I did not trust the trailer I still don't trust the trailer in any severe weather so um we went over to our future home because we have access to it and uh stayed there hunkered down there this is hot and um lost power over there the power is still out over there actually which is crazy um and uh was sat in the dark there for a little while tried to read some books it was it was quite tricky um but uh came back and apparently i had left a couple of mugs in my office with unknown substances in them coffee tea the like so i had to do the dishes and light a couple fucking candles in here because it was gross <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to get started. About five minutes till. I will be right back. Where's my 
pause to record. Wait a second. Hey. Oh, there it is. There it is. Whew. Sorry, this is being recorded for you too, for the people that can't make it to the uh, Zoom call. I'm supposed to do that at the beginning of my spiel but whatever so sorry i have not been looking over at instagram also if i'm looking down i'm not ignoring you i'm just looking over um on the instagram comments and i keep taking off my eyeballs we will go ahead cat hair on that we will go ahead and get started with maria hi can you hear me yes you can hi uh this is my second meeting Oh, welcome. I did welcome enjoy back. this book a lot more than the previous one. I thought that it was a, lo a lot of fun. Like, it had a lot of information, but also it was very lighthearted, even for a book for about cannibalism. Right. I did enjoy uh, also the writing style and how it not only focused on humans, but also on animals, because I love animals. Mm -hmm. And I think it would have been a waste if they weren't included. And I think like half of the book are, are about them. Uh, I, I also like how he didn't focus on true crime because that's not a topic that I, that I like. And it, it would have been very easy to like add it there because in a book like this is like almost expected. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also enjoy like especially like the chapter about the placenta eating because it was almost, almost like the, the set of a, of a horror movie. Yeah, <laughs> like you are invited to a house of rich people, and they eat to eat the placenta of the mother. Uh the only like little complaint that I have, well, it's not really a complaint, but like I didn't really enjoy the epilogue about the dystopian future about cannibalism because everything about else about in the book was so grounded in reality and was scientific and informative, and then in the, it ends like that. Mm -hmm. So it felt a little out of place. Well, like, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. The rest of the book was great. Yeah. Yeah, he said in the podcast that if he had to rewrite anything about the book, he would have probably taken that chapter out there at the end um, because it, it was a slightly exaggerated, possibly. It was, you know, very... Um, what's the word for it? Um potentially fantastical i don't know i don't know but he did he did say he did express that he wasn't a huge fan of the way he ended in yes cam um also cam hi in the chat she hosts she's one of our undertakers she hosts the morbidly curious triangle chapter what's up cam bill's voice is ear candy for sure bill has a great like soothing radio voice <laughs> it was awesome he was awesome to chat with anybody else what else did we think i definitely agree with you um uh, Maria, it was fascinating too to kind of see how that translates over to the animal kingdom as well. And it seems like most of his books are like that, or if not all of his books are like that too. And I need to definitely read his other ones. Yes, Brit. Brittany. Mm. Hi. Yeah. Um, I just got off work and it was like a day from hell. So sorry. Um, well, but that. the book I was well, not my favorite. Um, I enjoyed it until after the Donner party chapter um and then he kind of lost me um that was a he long went chapter. yeah um i liked the donner party one but then after that it just it like dragged on and it was really hard for me to finish the rest of the book um i really liked the information about the animals though um at first, I was a little disappointed that he didn't go into the true crime side, but after listening to the podcast and him explaining why he didn't, I completely understand and respect that um, since that's not his area of expertise and he didn't feel like he should speak about something that he doesn't have any like experience with. Totally. So I did respect that. Um, I would like somebody to make a specific true crime cannibalism book, mm -hmm. but you know, that's for the future. Um, I also, I liked the way he wrote though, and I liked how kind of dry and, and there were times that he was pretty snarky. Um, but overall, I think I gave this like a three or a 3.5. So it was not my favorite book. Um, 
but I still enjoyed it overall. And I'm glad that I read it because I would have never read it otherwise. <laughs> so, you know, um, thanks. <laughs> love, we love hearing that. I also love how um, it, there's been a lot in the Mooresville chapter that I host <laughs> where uh, um, people have been reading it out in public and posting photos of them reading out in public and noting on the strange looks that they're getting. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Please continue to do so. Spread the weird <laughs> word if that... Ooh, that's a good merch idea. Sounds biblical and creepy. Spread the weird word. The that's weird good. Word. Somebody write that down. Write that down. Megan, write it down. <laughs> Wonton soup. Wonton soup during the placenta chapter. Jacqueline. <laughs> My God, that is brave. Um, Yeah, anything anything after i don't know seeing the pictures of it which i posted pictures of it on the patreon it's definitely like not very discernible but you just know it's there and honestly i think that was what really solidified my five stars because i was like wow he did that <laughs> okay respect respect um i read it in line at a friday the 13th event nobody stood close to me it was perfect i love that hi ashley coming to you from the darkness of shelby north carolina how are you how are you joining us yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna phrase this by hopefully you can hear me yes. i'm literally driving around keep signal um because we still have no power and it's just creepy as fuck yeah. out here right now um but I just wanted to chime in. I did enjoy the book. Um, I will never get the placenta chapter out of my head. Mm -hmm. And um, I have you to thank for that. Uh, I don't think I've actually literally gagged while reading a book until I read that chapter. And the fact that he went to Texas and did that just made it even worse for me. Yeah, man. Um, and that was the same like time where, mm -hmm. you know, on TikTok, of course, there was a video going around how someone made her husband placenta tacos. And so that just made it even worse as I was reading it. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. I know way too much about, you know, fish and insect mating habits now. And my husband has made me promise never to say a single word about them again. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, but I loved his snarkiness throughout it. You know, the little jokes that he put in there, like, you know, kids meal and, and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't my favorite book, but I did, you know, enjoy learning a lot of stuff from it. Uh, and it was very informative, um, especially, you know, we all hear about the part about praying mantises and how, you okay. know, when they mate, you know, they eat the, the, the mate. And it turns out that that's not always the case. Um, and so I just, especially when, it, you know, he went in and talked about, and my brain is scatterbrained with everything going on right now. Mm -hmm. So if I'm jumping around, I apologize. No, but with the, you know, the indigenous populations and some of the islands and how it was used to essentially just villainize them. Um, you know, I found that, you know, heartbreaking and interesting, but the fact that he was actually, you know, calling it out, um, you know, re I really liked that fact that he didn't just sugarcoat that part and he was, you know, really just laying it all out there. So, um, I think, uh, it's going to be about a three and a half star for me. Um, but I'm really glad that we did read the book, but yeah, the placenta chapter is never, I don't think I can eat tacos for a while like i just can't I'm like oh no mm -mm. i don't know but. yeah it's it's um you know what's interesting is I, of course i don't have kids so I, I wouldn't necessarily know this but for some reason i could have sworn that i you know figured that that there was a beneficial factor to consuming your placenta so i not that i would know but i just for some reason thought that and i can't remember who i was speaking to but i, I said like oh i've heard that's good for you and they were like no it's actually just a bunch of white women in the 60s or 70s. That just right. It's a good idea. Exactly. And I was talking to my husband about He's like, well, you know, I mean, anything can be a religion nowadays. So, I mean, no, it's where not. we're at. <laughs> not wrong. And no judgment if you ate it. I mean, that's totally fine. If that, if it worked for you, that's, you know, that's totally fine. And, you know, as far as the, at least from Bill's perspective, too, he's talking about the whole placebo effect. And, you know, if that that's something that you've benefited from. 
all kudos, you know, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, kudos to you, but, um, I've, I, I have three kids and never once in my brain did I ever think, Hey, let me go ahead and do this. Um, and so the fact, I, I don't know. Yeah. I have so many thoughts on that, on that chapter, but love y'all just wanted to jump on here. I don't know how much longer I'll have signal, but yeah. Thank you. Love you dearly. Be safe, please. That's the, that's the point. <laughs> that's the goal. You know where I'll be tomorrow if you need to leave the city for a little bit. Yeah. All right, Annie. Hi. Hello, welcome. Okay, so I felt this book was a little bit better than middle for me. Um, I enjoyed reading it. There was so much that I highlighted and things um so like the notes that I did make before I got lazy and stopped making notes um were kind of all over the place but the first thing I noticed I think it was way back at the beginning when they were talking about um cannibalism in nature wasn't always just like an accepted thing and I was like wow it's really weird I guess since ever since I was growing up I at least knew about like praying mantises and those kind of things that you just like accepted like I don't think there was ever a time in my life when I was like, oh, cannibalism, that's not a thing. <laughs> right. I think I always knew it existed in some form. Um, and then, and I'll just go like down my little quick list of random thoughts that I noted. Like I also didn't really consider, I don't know why I didn't, but I'd never really considered like using, maybe because I grew up just accepting that cannibalism was a thing. I didn't ever really consider using it to try to dehumanize people to do whatever you wanted to them um and okay so then I have some more they get more random as we go um I think it was because sometimes I can't read my notes I think it was called endo cannibalism yeah. there's something about what you eat the your, your like relatives to help with the grieving process and this is a very far reaching analogy but it made me think of when my cat passed away I did not eat her. Don't do not worry. We are all waiting with bated breath. <laughs> um, and it just made me think that I had her cremated, but I didn't take her back. And for me, it was a similar concept, not eating mm. her. But the idea that like, I think their idea was that if you ate your relatives, they weren't there anymore. Like their body wasn't there. So it helped with the grieving. And so I just kind of analogized like, oh, well, that's why part of why I didn't take the remains back from my cat, because oh my if she was like sitting on the shelf, I would have to look at her. And I know people have all sorts of different viewpoints on what to do when your pet passes. But for me, that's what I was thinking about. So I was like, oh, oh in a very far stretching analogy, this endocannibalism kind of makes sense. Right. At least like their reasoning behind it. Um, and then I just noted, which I had to look, look back up because I already forgot the HHRD dogs, the historic human remain yeah. dogs, which I thought was cool because, uh, in, at some point in my legislative career, I worked on some of the stuff that had to do with the, uh, school for boys, like in Mariana and Okeechobee. Oh, and okay. in that time I had to like research, um, because of course everyone knows about like Kadap, like dogs that can sniff cadavers but there was a time when I was researching like what you could dogs sniff out bodies that had been in the ground for like 50 years um so I had to start like deep diving into like yes there are dogs that can smell and there's like no human tissue left and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so that I just noted that because I was like oh that's probably something similar to what I was looking at if they can sniff out historical human remains because obviously there's not gonna be tissue and blood and that kind of stuff left over yeah, that's um, fascinating. And then the last two things, ran, again, really random. Um, I think his name was also Bill, Bill Aarons, that that he kept talking about. I I oh, did boy. appreciate that at the end, Bill Schutt was like, actually, I kind of like that Aarons denied cannibalism because it made people have like alternative theories and made them like be really discerning. So yeah. it like prompted them to do better work, basically. And then in the end, Aaron's was like, just kidding. I think it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly, but like kind of. And then I will just say the last thing is since I've been reading this book, I keep, I'm like, I think it's that thing where like 
when you buy a car, now you see that car everywhere. So since I've been reading about cannibalism, I see references to it everywhere. <laughs> I posted the other day on our book club's board about that new show, Grotesquerie, and they Ooh. have like this whole discussion about um, the Bible and how cannibalism shows up in the Bible. And, oh, and then I thought of the book I read before, The House of Bathory. I don't know if anyone's familiar with like that story about Elizabeth Bathory. Oh, yeah. who, like, kept the young women in her house and then bathed in their blood. It, I was reminded of that. And I swear I've seen random references to cannibalism all over the place since I started reading this book. And I'm like, I think it's just because <laughs> my brain is on the topic. And then lastly, I will just say, I've been reading this at work because we're in a slow time right now. And I had it out on my desk and my boss walked by and she's like, cannibalism, what are you reading? <laughs> And I was like, it's just, you know, this and that and the other thing. And she's just like, okay. I was like, you remember I told you it's that book club I'm in. We read about cemeteries last month. And she was like, okay, Annie. <laughs> Anyways. I, so those things, I had so much more that I like highlighted or whatever um, going through. But those were some of the things that I noted down that intrigued me when I was reading through the book. There's so many little tidbits, though. You're right where it's like oh my god did you know this was a thing and then this was a thing and then this was a, like I found myself like I went to the bookmarks festival in Winston over the weekend and this poor woman in line I don't know if she I gave her a business card who knows if she will come back because I probably scared her away but I was like you know oh my god yeah guaranteed conversation starter or ender um, that's pretty funny because I was like yeah you know I hope because we were in this nonfiction like signing line uh for Liza Mundy with her new book Code Girls or her new book uh S S Sisterhood or something like that anyway I was like I love seeing long lines for nonfiction authors and I was asking her like do you read a lot of nonfiction you should totally join my book club and then I just went on this absolute landslide of a tangent where I was talking about all different kinds same thing where I was talking about the Donner Party or I was talking about Indo and Exo cannibalism and how like certain parties want to only eat their relatives but some parties find that repulsive and like you know poor woman is just standing there like I just met you <laughs> well oh I did share the Athena tidbit at my birthday dinner so that was super fun yeah. my friend I told her one morning I woke up and texted her about it and then at my birthday dinner she's like Annie why don't you share with everyone what you felt like you needed to text me the other morning and I was like okay sure you know what fine I will <laughs> fine I will um that's great yeah i i really didn't realize i guess really didn't realize is that a great word a uh, way to phrase that i didn't realize that we were still uncertain about the location of the donner party i guess in certain parts of the donner party that was new to me did we i know we read the indifferent stars above and i'm not gonna remember everything from that book even though i loved the indifferent stars above but i don't remember if that was mentioned by the author Daniel James Brown it might have been but I I don't I didn't realize that but also the the school that they frequently mentioned which the audiobook narrator consistently mispronounced Appalachian State University for the love of god Appalachian write that down everybody write that down right now I'm so sick of it <laughs> my biggest audiobook pet peeve anyway so that's Boone North Carolina so that's where my sister went to school and I got to tell my sister about how the Appalachian State PR team is still picking up the pieces from that terrible PR release about how cannibalism never happened at the Donner party. But yeah, I thought that was done. But those dogs, I mean, that's so fascinating that they can still sniff that out. Like, are you kidding me? I, what? I can't wrap my head around that. Um, I'm also trying to go down the list of what you said. Into an extra cannibalism Donner party. I will tell you, I just found out there's also now dogs can sniff out electronics. So, I mean, dogs can pretty much sniff out everything. We don't deserve them. We really don't um shoot what else i was gonna say something else about what you said um as far as the animal kingdom goes yeah i mean this whole praying mantis thing or like spiders which oh my god honestly like the placenta chapter was creepy to me but anything to do with spiders thinking about them envisioning them seeing all the little drawings it makes me want to like strip everything off and just go shower because i feel like they're crawling all over me is that too much information who cares <laughs> um yeah dogs are amazing i i i really learned so much reading this truly learned so much reading this um and thank belated birthday annie right was your birthday in september yeah it was the 20th thank you hey happy belated birthday love that 
Um, if you guys do join the Discord, um, Megan, if you're able to pop the the link in there, if not, I can grab it really quick because I know you have to set it to like unlimited or whatever, or maybe not since we're just on the Zoom call. Um, we do shout out for birthdays, and you can put like your Amazon wish list in your info. Um, people can send you books if you'd like. And I'm so happy belated. Love that. Thank you for being here, um, Jessica. This county is really dry. My mouth is really dry. Goodness. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Fighting with my uh, phone. I don't usually do this on my phone. Um, so I'm not quite done with the book yet because um, I fail. But um, I got to the <laughs> I got to the part with um, where he's discussing um, communion and you know blood and body and all of that. <laughs> and yeah. Oh, what's that called? Yeah. It starts with a T. Uh, I don't know. It's not my area. <laughs> so fascinating to me, though. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. Tra trans Transubstantiation. Thank you. I was like, yeah. someone's going to know. Um, yeah. I was like, is the, the whole like communion thing, the whole, you, you know, taking that going to come up in this book? Because for some faiths, they believe it is an actual like transformation and transform what was whatever that word was <laughs> um, oh, I've heard of it. Transub transubstantiation and then for others it's you know metaphorical right and I was like okay so interesting is it going to be in here and then it was and I was like oh my gosh we're going there <laughs> um so I just I love the breadth of what he's covering here because I too was loving the the discussion of the animals and the bugs and like pulling up at Dunkin' Donuts and they're like, and then the snail rips off the head on the piece. And I'm like, Jesus. I love audiobook. darts. Turn it down. <laughs> but yeah, most embarrassing audiobook I've ever uh, listened to in public. Uh, but in um, a fun way. So um, really enjoying it so far, um, but definitely not done yet. So um, I don't feel like it's like spoilery in the way that you know, like, I feel like people can ruin it, but I'm I'm now looking forward to whatever this placenta section is. I was about um, to say, did we just spoil the placenta chapter for I you? I mean, oh, I boy. feel like I could see, like, that would be in here, right? Um, that it that is. That you must, you know, you must have some discussion of that practice. But um, anyway, I will leave you with a hello from Remus to all those in North Carolina. <laughs> and, um, I hope Hi, you baby. all do better. Oh, I love it too. My um, my cousin Chelsea commented in the in the Instagram. I grew up Methodist, and Body of Christ was kind of delicious. Yeah. dude. When I tell you, the old ladies can make some damn good bread at the Broad yeah. Street United Methodist Church that I grew up in. Man, yeah. bread was so good, and of course, yeah. Welsh's grape juice with it. <laughs> yep, yep. I also grew up Methodist, and yeah. So we're not doing oh, yeah. this all the time. It's definitely yes. metaphorical. Like, yeah. So, I remember I anyway. tried a wafer one time. I can't remember what it was for, but we had wafers. Um, oh, vampirism and cannibalism. Hell yeah. Uh, we had wafers for something like the Catholic plastic little saucers. And I put it in my mouth. And uh, I remember walking back up the aisle with it just sitting on my tongue because I was like nervous that I actually wasn't supposed to eat it because it was <laughs> actual garbage. Like it tasted like just yeah a bottle cap styrofoam or like, something yeah. yeah styrofoam and i'm like i don't think i was supposed to eat this so like i spit it out <laughs> i spit it out like the first trash can i saw and, just put, and uh i don't know i i don't know how i don't know how the catholics do it because those wafers are trash come to the methodist side where old women are baking up some damn good bread <laughs> yeah I love so it. true oh my gosh but yeah looking forward to finishing it yes please let us know what you think join the discord if you oh, haven't um i don't know if you're in the discord yeah. i'm so sorry i get it mixed I up i am i'm just not a good participant <laughs> oh no you're good I, I never know if people are because it's like either their names yeah. or their names um uh wafers are awful yes nikki says as a catholic school grad i asked every teacher i could if we were really eating the body and blood of christ nikki whatever mm -hmm. was in your head is true i guess yes methodists <laughs> love that love that um, Georgia, also, you had a cat um, that I would like to meet, if you don't mind bringing them back up to, to center stage. Thank you very much. The cat is sleeping on the side of my computer. That's what he likes. Mm. This, this is um, this is Conrad. Hi, Conrad. Um, I am a firm believer in giving your cats people names. 
Um, all of my cats have always had people names, so that's Conrad. Um, he loves a Zoom. That's his favorite thing is a Zoom. Um, that's his favorite thing. Um, so I I want to give a PSA uh, for two things. Number one, the placenta chapter. Like, if you haven't read it yet and you are uh, have a sensitive stomach, let me say, oh, oh. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. It was so viscerally upsetting. I've been on a kick of reading like horror books and this was so much more upsetting than anything I have read in years and woof, um, rough. <laughs> but I'm so sorry. my second PSA is for the podcast because I found it really helpful and it kind of turned around my opinion of this book, which was not Hell yeah. super super positive and I I got really bogged down in the animal um the animal section and thought that the kind of facts were interesting by themselves but was not very interested in reading like long chapters um even though I, I see what he's trying to do in getting people interested in these zoological kinds of questions and uh mm -hmm. Yeah, I just got really bogged down in them and was considering not finishing the book and then really appreciated the middle section about indigenous people and um, these, the material about China was super interesting, yeah. like in, Indo and Exo cannibalism, all these things. Um, and then near the end of the book, it goes into a long discussion of, of prion diseases and, and Kuru, and then it kind of lost me again. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I... Uh, turned on the podcast and was so immediately charmed by his um, love of bats. Um, there's like a 15 minute portion at the beginning of the podcast, <laughs> all about bats. And I loved it. And I was so charmed by it. And I was so um, charmed by him as a person and how excited he is to talk about all of these things and all these little bits of knowledge that he has. Um and one of the things that he says on the podcast is that people always kind of um, want to talk about whether or not they would or would not participate in cannibalism if they were in the Donner Party or in the Andes or, or wherever. And he says, you can't really know that until oh. you are in that situation and, and you really see the effects of starvation. But I feel like a better question to ask people, you know, as a conversation starter, as a, as a party opener, as an icebreaker is, um, would you travel to Texas to eat somebody's placenta if they <laughs> offered it to you oh, because, because he says yeah. oh I had to take them up on it because I would just be kicking myself if I if I didn't do it and I mean I, respect Bill but it can't be me I'm so sorry hell no and like he goes and the podcast thank you so much for listening to the podcast by the way but him to go on and say like I'm so glad she wasn't sick I'm like <laughs> Bill <laughs> Jesus Christ what do you mean <laughs> oh i love it i love it thank you so much jordy yeah i really really appreciate that um yeah when we were scheduling our zoom call he was like i can't do this date because i have a european bat conference and can't do this date and i'm like <laughs> i need to know more about that please thank you um yeah yeah scientists for sure and he was so knowledgeable of like what's happening with bats currently yeah it was he was fascinating um, so sorry, the placenta chapter. Thank you for coming back. Um, so sorry, the placenta chapter was rough to listen to. Um, yeah, I love, I love that. Love it. Thank you so much. Hi, Cam. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm oh, good. You know, I need to shower, but I'm good. Um, so even though I am a chapter host, and it's like my fifth month in the book club, um, this is the first time I've talked on the zoom call Yay. so um but i think like georgia i really really loved his um his little bat section at the beginning of the podcast like he just was so excited about them and i felt like he could have talked to you for two hours about bats yeah. which i would have happily listened to um yeah that was that was really great um and i did i really enjoyed the way he kind of broke down why he didn't talk about criminal cannibalism um which I think he added plenty of reasons in his book. Um, he added so many like different kinds that I think it was okay that 
you know, he didn't go into that. Um, I think my favorite part for sure was um, the chapter about the Chinese culture, just mm-hmm. because like they very clearly didn't have the kind of Western influence that we had um, for so long with the taboo. And the most like interesting part to me was about the Great Leap Forward and this kind of like nationwide failed agricultural initiative Mm -hmm. that led to like nationwide cannibalism instead, um, which was just like a wild 180. Um, And I think especially like with the campaign season and stuff right now, it's just like, what if that was like a, like a platform, like, Mm. you know, and how, just how poorly things could go so quickly. Um, I've already bought a book about the Great Leap Forward because I just, I think it's really, really interesting in the fact that, you know, they had this five-year plan and it only made it like two and a half years in before, you know, people had to start eating each other was really interesting to me. Um, And also the um, instance of filial piety was really interesting to me as well. Um, I think there was just something about I kind of got to that part and I had to kind of like confront some of my own biases because I was like, oh, I've definitely been thinking about cannibalism as like an adult male activity. Sure. Um, And so for it to be something that children or younger people or descendants kind of initiated instead um, was just very interesting. And I, it just kind of made me think like what kind of, you know, mindset do you have to be in as a kid, as a younger person to think like, this is, you know, this is like the highest form of respect and love that I can give a family member. Um, Obviously, aside from like, if your culture has the kind of cannibalism taboo or not. Um, So those two instances, I think out of everything were really, really interesting to me. I really liked the animal parts, but the human parts, um, were 10 times more interesting to me um probably until we got to like the mad cow disease Mm -hmm. um and then that part I I was really grateful that I had the audiobook (laughs) because I was just like this is I there's some part of my brain that can't figure I can't track it so (laughs) um but other than that I really really enjoyed this book I think I gave it a nine out of ten so yeah I did too yes love it Love it. If you're in the Raleigh area. Yeah, check me go out. Join, go join uh, the Triangle chapter. Um, there's a couple things too while you were talking that I realized I needed to tap into. I think it was Annie that mentioned William Aarons. I think he had a fascinating arc in this book. And when I mentioned him to Bill, Bill was like really respect, like that he was thought the guy was super great, really respectful towards him. And he also started it off with the fact that William Aarons did pass away in 2019. And I was like, oof, okay good to know i hate that i didn't realize that that he had passed since the uh book's release in 2017 um criminal i'm trying to i have post-it notes in my brain right now criminal cannibalism yes a lot of people were commenting too on the instagram that they're glad that he left that out i guess a part of me is is interested in that and why people do that and i think it was good that he did mention the german serial killer um where the guy basically his partner gave consent to it i think that is definitely fascinating and i do think because he explored so many different facets of the cannibalism i did kind of want a little bit of that but i understand that's not his field um also uh cam you were mentioning um bats he does have a book called bill shot does have a book called dark banquet 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 where he goes into detail about blood sucking creatures and there's a huge section in there about bats so definitely check that out i haven't read that one yet because i don't think there's an audiobook for it um okay over there there what else there was something else i wanted to say oh it's interesting how some people really loved the animal kingdom chapters but didn't really love the human chapters as much but and, and vice versa um and i did also speak to that poor girl in line with me yesterday at uh the bookmarks festival about how some cultures were absolutely repulsed by the idea of burying your dead like that to me is so fascinating and instead they they feel like it's super respectful to consume them so that was a bunch of uh, word vomit for things I think I've been wanting to mention. Um, anyway, carrying on, if I remember anything else, I will let you know. Ray, your hair is so cute. When did you chop it? You're muted, babe. You're muted, babe. Babes. When'd you cut it? 
Ah, uh, when did I cut it? Right before I went to Iceland because I didn't want to deal with the wind. Uh, so okay, casual. Fuck. The, yeah, um, at the very end of August. This is the length it normally is, but I got really lazy. Well, no, I was getting my money's worth out of highlights that I got. Um, I didn't want to cut them off, so I let it grow for like nine months longer than I normally do. So it's, it's lovely. It's all gone it. now. Um, I ready for scarves. I love it. Um, I really enjoyed this book. And ooh, I just made myself dizzy. I need to eat. Um, <laughs> I listened to the majority of it on the six hour flight I was on. And there were specifically the spider section that I had to like finish it, pause it, rewind, and give my husband my headphones so he could listen to it because we have orb weavers. And specifically, we have one giant female one and we've named her Freebird. Um, Awesome. Because they jump so far uh -uh. to, like, do their little, like, giant web thing that we picture her doing that to the solo, the guitar solo from Freebird. Um, so that's what her name is. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, he needs to know that Freebird is kind of, um, kind of a boss like this. And so I just got to watch his face progress, and I'm sorry if I if I'm cutting out or anything, my connection's not great right now. Um, but yeah, that was super interesting. I The other part that I found really interesting was the fact that there's not a scientific consensus on what creons actually are. Because yeah. I always thought that there was, like, we had, we had been at that point for a long, long time now that they were just misfolded proteins. Because prions, in my opinion, are one of the scariest things on Earth. Because um, nothing destroys them. They're just kind of a forever thing. Right. Um, and I did not know that there was any, like, that we weren't 100% sure what they actually were and, like, what really caused them. Mm -hmm. um, which is honestly terrifying. It was also interesting to hear, because, like, I knew bits and pieces about how mad cow disease was handled in the UK. Um, I didn't think it was this bad. Creepy to think that it, it was. And that also makes me really nervous um, for the deregulation of rather removing some of the USDA's mm -hmm. regulatory power in the U.S., like, what happened with the Boar's Head plant and that being closed in the Listeria outbreak because of, like, the Trump era, mm -hmm. like, pullbacks on regulation. So that makes me think, like, okay, how long until we have something mm -hmm. like that? Because obviously by the time, like, it's noticed, it's far too late to stop it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, brand diseases are just, like, the most terrifying thing. So I think... Prions, spiders, my two favorite parts. It was also really interesting just hearing, I don't know, how recently, like, I in my head, I knew that the Great Leap Forward caused, I mean, millions, tens of millions of people to die from starvation. So I did know that there was cannibalism happening, but I just somehow disconnected the fact that it was so recent. Yeah. yeah. And just, like... Just, just how like in in recent history that was, because I think of anything like that happening in like pre nineteen hundreds, because mm -hmm. you know Donna Party. Um, yeah, I, I in general really liked the book. I it it got me through a, a six hour flight, and I was very thankful for that. So, do you just like let your spider kind of like roam, or oh, she well. I, I am sad to say she moved one house down. Oh. She'll be back. Um, because all of her offspring still live in my backyard. And they like to, because we have like a detached garage. So it's garage, path, house. Okay. And they, they spin their little web across the path where we walk. And it hasn't been as bad recently, but we have spider sticks and next to like the garage door and the house door where you just like wave it in front of you when you're walking from one to the other like in the morning or like at night 
when they've probably like created a new web because like I respect spiders. Yeah. I don't want their webs on me. I Yeah, it's a gross like And I just I always think they're in my hair. <laughs> I feel like they're on me. Dude. Worst thing are spiders in my hair. Um so oh, wow. we have our spider six, but I, I fear Freebird has has moved moved along, but I, I, I feel in my heart she'll be back before winter. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like they're I feel like they're crawling all over me. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, and they're them. huge. They're so big. I know the house um the house that we're moving into, hopefully, uh it, they have seen a couple of big old wolf spiders there and I'm like, I need I need something done about this because I was, they can do their thing, just not near me. Prefer we have the little like jumping spiders in our garden, and they end up in the house. Um, and I just have to picture those as like Lucas, the little like CGI spider. So I, mm -hmm. those are fine, and they do eat bu other bugs, so they can stay. That's whatever. I they need to stay up though. Yeah, I, I don't want them on my floor. I don't want them where a cat can get them, and I don't want to touch them. But any like big beefy ones, no, those gotta go back outside. <laughs> There was a picture of a, a close-up of spiders' feet, and it looked oh, like yeah. little paws. It's yeah! Like, here's a friendly reminder that spiders have paws, and I'm like, it's still not doing it for me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> still not, nay, nay. I'm still, still not interested in that whatsoever, but good for you, though. We we do need people out there who do love them. I wish. It's it's just like a it's a weird thing with their legs. I can't change my mind. It's my brain. I, it's, it's the eyes. And, like, just the actually no it's the whole it's the whole creature yeah. i don't like any part of it i respect them but i don't it's mm. not for me i could never be a spider scientist no thank you thank you thank you for coming hope you had a great trip to iceland very jealous um speaking of chapter undertakers we have tam here hailing him from los angeles also curious tam and cam love that um and anybody else if i'm missing any other undertakers here please tell me how your chapter meetings went why does that happen um uh tell me how your chapter meetings went because i would love to know i hosted the charlotte one and the belmont one and the charlotte one i had this one guy just blatantly ask you know like okay well like if we came down to it similar to what um georgia was saying because also we're guilty of, I, i'm especially guilty of this too from the indifferent stars above meeting i was asking chris and kind of making a joke about it like would you eat somebody and then once i spoke to bill totally like or read this book too like totally like you know sat me down and was like hey you really don't know the answer to that but there was somebody in the charlotte chapter that was like okay well like what if it was a delicacy like on the like you went to another country and they actually you know this wasn't as weird and this wasn't as taboo like would you do it and i'm like yes we're asking the good questions here um most of the group said no by the way but tam please tell i love the pictures by the way um please tell me oh thanks yeah went. it looked so um, fun i love that you're at hollywood forever too oh my god yeah, I, I'm really glad that the group suggested that to me instead of me kind of like acting like a dictator and just kind of deciding how things were going to be. But I here at this time. Yeah. yeah, but I was I was so stoked that they were on board with that because I I love going there. Um, it was good. Um, we had a much smaller group this time. Um, one of the members brought little like cake pops with like yeah, eyeball was, frosting. I was, um, I was they telling were them so that before you got here. Cute. Yeah. Huh? I was telling them about that before you got here, and I was I said I called them cake pops, so I'm glad that I was accurate on on what they no, actually. No, yes, they were they were cake pops, and they were delicious, and it was such a nice touch that they had like forks sticking out of them, and like like he I I'm gonna have to get the name of the company that he ordered them from, but like they they like shipped them like to him, and then wow. he like brought them to us like. That's they were awesome. shipped from another state. I know that. Um, but it was it was so cute. Um, we so I my favorite part of the book was actually the little section about um corpse medicine. I was like, oh, I'm awake now. Hello. <laughs> um and uh I don't know, like the book that he like Bill Shutt mentioned about like uh I think it's like corpses, mummies, and vampires or something like that. I looked that book up and I noticed that it was like, oh, like there's different editions of it. So I wonder if it's like some sort of like textbook or like, I don't know, like higher education oh. thing. And I'm wondering if anybody has read it, please let me know if it's like easily digestible to like the average person because I really want to read it. Um, but yeah, that was my favorite part. 
some really hot topics with the um the Hollywood Forever meeting were the placenta chapter, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um we <laughs> I was immediately like, I know it's white women. When I got to that section, I'm like, it's white women that are doing this, probably. <laughs> um and I just we were like apparently there's like a whole like community of people who make art with placenta and I thought that was super interesting yeah I I, I see Joanna's face and I'm like I, I, I agree um I think if it's your placenta like cool like do what you want with it but if you like buy art with like somebody else's placenta used like that gets a little that's bit weird little even strange. for me personally right. like yeah. that's cool that's fine but for me I'm gonna draw the line there um and uh we also really enjoyed uh the section about like um victorians like eating mummies like we all thought that was super interesting um we you know liked that he touched on the fact that cannibalism being a taboo is very much like a western thing and it you know there are certain cultures that that's completely normal for them um and i like that he pointed that out um what else did, I don't I don't know what else oh we got into like some weird debate on like what is considered cannibalism and what isn't like I brought up the whole like in the cannibalism channel on the discord somebody was like jokingly like posted like from x like uh like oh is is eating your own placenta like an acceptable vegan meat and so like I posed that question as like complete jest um but we had a couple vegetarians in the group so it was a resounding no uh like maybe maybe vegetarian but not vegan so uh we really got into that and then like we talked about like you know like sucking your own blood if you like prick your yeah, finger yeah. on something and like we got we got super into it it was such a fun discussion this month I love that I'm sitting here like chewing on my nails and that's like what is it called auto cannibalism is that what it's called where you like oh yes and we we talked about auto cannibalism too like if you are like alone like in like a weird survival situation or something which like I would probably never do that like I'm never going to be in a situation where I'm like in the wilderness some somewhere you know like I'm not going to go hiking <laughs> I at, at all full stop but especially like alone <laughs> but like if you like had to take like a chunk out of your arm or something to like survive like is that and it's like yes technically I feel like that's cannibalism but like I don't know I guess lefty's gotta go in that situation because I'm right-handed right so that's what yeah, that's an interesting topic, interesting. though. I mean, again, it, it goes hand in hand too with that idea of like you don't really know, and, and nobody here can fathom. Hopefully, we talked. The idea we talked about and, that too, and it's like wow. if you did do that in a survival situation, like would you like psych yourself out to where like you would I like would. regurgitate? You know, like I mean, um. So I probably we would. brought that up too, and yeah, definitely. Like, no, thank you. No. Yeah. Uh, I love that though. I love that people are bringing treats and stuff to the meetings though. That's so much fun. Um, and I love, I love a good solid discussion on it. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Uh, Vicki, I do see your hand, but really quick on the topic. Cam, did you have your meeting already in, in the, in Raleigh? Yes, I had it. Um, we ended up doing it virtually because it got rained out and yes. I got worried about the weather and then it ended up being sunny the rest of the afternoon. So it's just like, Oh, Okay, that's right. But yeah, we had a really um, good discussion. We talked about like the taboos and stuff a lot. Um, and just, you know, different ways that um, cannibalism is seen as really terrible here, but um, in other countries and other cultures, it's not, um, you know, and how here it's to not bury someone's dead is like a legal offense. Like you can catch a charge for that kind of um yeah you know, some of the activities that were talked about in this book and then in other places, that's like, you're locking someone up for being respectful. So yeah, that was, that was a really interesting chat, but it was really good. It was nice. Cool. I love to hear that. And also Tam, uh, Sarah in the chat, I don't know if you saw, but Sarah said that they are re currently reading Mummies, Cannibals and Vampires um, used for college courses. Is that the one you were talking about or was it the other one that you're talking? I can't remember that's what oh, i was talking about and thank you so much yes i saw that thank you you did respond and i completely did not see that cool cool cool. i did see that you said thank you so much okay <laughs> sorry yeah i need to buy it. i think it was really expensive on amazon though i need to find a copy of it though i would love to um oh yeah joanna please please share the title of that stephen king book whenever you get a second in the chat um can't figure it out what it, oh can't remember i have to look that up 
Um, go ahead, Vicky. I I really like this book, even though I really don't like his definition of cannibalism. I really have problems with this <laughs> complete definite definition because he ends up calling like all sorts of the I mean, like. When dogs and cats give birth, they're eating all the excess. <laughs> like, so you're calling them cannibals. Yum. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> and I, so I, I'm like, I'm having a little trouble here. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that topic. That's a great topic, though. Like, kind of, I think it was yeah. uh, Sam that brought that up. Like, what, what, or somebody else. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly who, but what exactly is cannibalism? Like, where's the line? Yeah. I think that was Sam. So I, I, I have a bit of trouble with that. I could have spent a lot more time with talking, you know, if, if he was my professor, I, I probably would have like, sure. talked to him a long time. Um, but, you know, I've mentioned this a few times in the Discord, but my background is archaeology and anthropology. And I got, I, there was times I'm like, yeah, okay, but you're not an anthropologist <laughs> that's no. missing there. <laughs> and the big time was when talking about the Karoo and the Karoo disease and stuff. And he's talking about the one couple. And I was just looking and I can't remember their their names, but the one couple and the story was about the man was was fornicating with the corpse and she was cutting it up and then cut off his member and then popped it in her mouth. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> this reminds me of a little bit of Margaret Mead and Samoa. <laughs> right. Where some of I... the stories she got were fabricated. Where she didn't witness the, the but she took the the accounts that she got from the young women as a hundred percent fact. Wow. Whereas when they re when they talked to later the same people talked to how you totally were telling her lies. <laughs> Yeah. So, and they're, you know, and they have them on tape, you know, years later, going, oh my God, were we telling her lies? We were teenagers telling her lies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're, they're totally laughing about it. And she wrote this, all these books about the promiscuousness of the young woman in Samoa. She never witnessed it, but they told her all about, oh, we go behind there and we go over there and this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And she was, they were like, oh, this is, we were telling her lies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She wrote a book about it. <laughs> you know. You've seen that a couple and of you know, times. Probably a couple times. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I wrote, I wrote big in the margin that wrote Margaret Mead and Samoa because they never witnessed anything, you yeah. know, and they even admitted that they never saw anything. Right. But I, I, I love what you said though, at the beginning when talking about, <laughs> is that actually cannibalism to, to cons like just to clean up, like it's an instinctual <laughs> thing for animals, but should that be considered cannibalism? I mean, that that's right. a interesting topic for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I got really into the chapters on the crew and all the the spongy form encephalophilus stuff. Yeah. Because especially when they start talking about, well, if it is a slow thing, we're going to see the die out in 50 years or so. Well, I was living in the UK eating beef, you know, 40 years ago. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you know, and to find out that Brian's may or may not be real and it could be a slow I'm like this is not making me really happy no but you're still here so <laughs> you're still here we're still good. <laughs> that's so scary and yeah. it, it's just like I've only just been okay to start giving blood again <laughs> oh my god yeah oh man so fascinating though. It's, it's why it's just the just even it's so wild that whole little bit it's all that stuff is just really really wild to me yeah what did you rate the book did you like you like the book though overall i 
overall, I really liked the book. I ended up um, rating it an eight or a nine. I can't remember what I did because it was sort of on a, on a scale of one to five. I ended up a four and a half. So is it a nine or is it an eight? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I I wound up. I gave it a five, but I gave it a nine on book clubs. Is that because it's like I've read <laughs> I've read books for the book club that I liked more, but I still really liked this. So I just I you're good. You're good either way. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you for being here. All right. Amy. Hey, everybody. Um, this is my first time coming to book club. I read about you in Rue Morgue magazine. So oh, yeah. um, you're doing wonderful work here. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed the book a lot. I more than I thought I would. I was definitely curious about it, but I I loved it and got a lot out of it. Learned a lot of cool stuff. Um, I was expecting, like I think a lot of people, I was expecting there to be more of a true crime element. Um, but as the book went on, I didn't mind that it wasn't there because there was enough other really cool stuff that we didn't need to get into the into that sort of like that's kind of for another day. I felt so. Um, I was really happy that he didn't get into that in this book and sort of stuck with the stuff that he did. I thought that was great. Um, and I really appreciated how he could make the sciencey stuff understandable. I'm sure it was, you know, dumbed down a lot and maybe um, watered down, but it, it, at least it made sense to the average reader. So I really appreciate that, uh, that he was able to do that. Um, and I'm with Tam. I'm here for the corpse medicine that section I am obsessed with. Mm -hmm. they're, they paint these scenes of like, there's public executions and people are running out there to get sprayed with blood for, for treatment. Like what, what is this? And then there was the part about the, where they're eating mummies, but then years later they look back and go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that translation might've actually meant something else. <laughs> you fools and it just makes me think where can i get that job right where can i get a job and just make up whatever and be like ah this means this and oh you know what blood will fix everything so will phlegm so <laughs> oh, if God. anybody knows that these jobs if they exist let me know because i'm here for them um yeah. but anyways yeah all in all amy um, I, being a politician you can make up ooh. anything <laughs> i i like that <laughs> So, yes, I love the book, um, and I can't wait to uh, read more stuff. Yay, thank you for coming. I love that. I, I, I love, um, yeah, there's been a couple people that have found us through the magazine. I, I think that's really cool. Also, oh, should I watch that show? Because um, the cover was, what is it called? The grotesque, somebody mentioned it earlier too, the grotesque Gary. What's it called? Who was talking about that? I don't know if they're that still here. Me. Should I Sorry watch it? You. No, 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 you're fine. It's grotesquery. Is it good? Should I watch it? I'm like, There's only two episodes out so far. I like it. Oh, okay. It's a weird one. It's good though. It's um got some interesting crime scenes. I don't know if anyone's like weird about that, but I think it's good. Cool. I'll have I to like tune that in. kind of weird stuff. Yeah. Cool. I'll tune in. I might do that after this. Um I uh and it's the I same also one. Found... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was just thinking. It's Ryan Murphy. I don't know if anyone's familiar. I think. Oh God. He's the one that did the murder, the monster show, the Dahmer. He just did the Menendez brothers because yeah. I realized that the priest is one of the Menendez brothers, and I had to like Google it while I was watching. I was like, wait, that guy looks so familiar because I'm also watching that show. So, but I really like his stuff because he's done a whole bunch of stuff. But anyways, yes, it's good. It's weird. It's grotesque. I, they've got very inventive with some of the crime scenes, but I, I would watch it. I okay. mean, I am watching it. I recommend it. <laughs> I will do that. Yeah. Uh, Menendez show. Yeah. Travis Kelsey's in it. Why? What the hell is yeah, Travis Kelsey doing? He's what? Think, I don't think I've seen him yet, but I did see that he was supposed to be in it. Mr. Taylor Swift. That's fucking hilarious. Um, yeah. I remember, I think it was on Twitter too. His mom, sorry, I'm getting off topic. His mom was like, I support my son, but basically said like, he shouldn't have done that. He was very bad in it or something like that. And I thought that was hysterical. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll watch that on tune in. Um, uh, episode three. Oh, goody. That's hilarious. Um, I will not, uh, will not be watching the Menendez show. So sorry, guys. I, I'm a big, um, 
Menendez supporter, I guess, is I've, I've been in a Menendez documentary. I, I really, really root for those boys. And I hope they men now at this point, um, hope they get out of prison. But I really don't love what Ryan Murphy is doing to uh, to their name. But I think people are catching on to that. I didn't hate the uh, Dahmer show, um, but um, yeah, Menendez one I've, um, I'm not too keen on. I had a friend work on it in the post-production department but she's been paid already so i can i can say i can say this um it's not gonna hinder her from getting jobs but um anyway so mistranslations <laughs> um that's hilarious i mentioned that in the charlotte book club too where i was like okay i i can't really seem to wrap my head around the idea of bloodletting and all this other stuff and consuming blood um and she this this girl danielle in the group was like well to be fair without all these textbooks and all this knowledge the idea of like losing something at such a rapid pace the idea of just consuming it again probably made sense to them or it's like i'm losing blood at such an excessive rate why don't i just drink some and that will put it back where it's supposed to go and i was like that's a good point um because yeah of course uh, sitting here with all this technology and knowledge and you know idea of how exactly this works you look back on it and you're just like well and also around that time too i think he was talking about how the um I want to say the Europeans. I think it was the Europeans were like just absolutely bashing on the idea of cannibalism. <laughs> and they thought it was just like so gross. Um, but they were they were participating like on their own turf. Like they were a part of it. They were doing their own thing. It's so crazy to me. Um, any other last minute thoughts? I think we covered all interesting parts. of. The, I mean, this book is all over the place with interesting parts so i i you know i think i think we've touched all the bases anybody else anybody else going once and going times next month we are reading goodbye hello by adam barry the adam barry i have um oh you had an acquaintance go to school with Dahmer. oh my god oh that was your friend that wrote my friend Dahmer. joanna yeah he was a co-worker of my ex-husband's in Cleveland. His name is, last name is Backdurf. I wrote Derp. It's not Derp. It's Derf. D-E-R-F. Whoa. That's fascinating. I need to read that graphic novel. I did watch the movie adaptation with Ross Lynch years ago, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, so next month, yeah, we're reading Goodbye Hello. I would totally show you my copy if I could find it. I don't know where I set that thing. I've read that book twice, I love that book. I've actually already spoke with Adam Barry for the podcast because of our schedules. We had to talk like at the end of August. So I've already got that episode ready to be edited and released. And of course, again, if you guys would like to support the Patreon, you will get it early and ad free. But if not, it will be up on the last Friday um, of October, right before the meeting on Sunday. Um, and uh, yeah, some very exciting news is coming October 1st. So definitely be sure to subscribe to the newsletter and check out Instagram. Um, cannot wait to discuss it. Uh, something that some people have already guessed and figured out, but. Um... <laughs> I love Adam Berry so much. Like I, oh, I can't get enough of kindred spirits in general. Like I've watched all seven seasons like years ago. Um, like, and I'm, I'm almost done with goodbye. Hello. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but I have been like, just on the verge of tears. Um, pretty much every chapter I've read so far. Cause I, I love it so much. And he just, he's so great. He's great. Um, also if you like, um, kindred spirits too, Adam, Amy Bruni just came out with a cookbook. That's super fun where she explores different haunted places and gets recipes from them. It's called food to die for love, Amy. Love Adam, love Kindred Spirits. I hope they continue it. Um, I don't know if they've been renewed just yet, but yeah, this is um, it's got stuff like Lizzie Borden's meatloaf in it. You know, I think that's fascinating. So, but yeah, definitely. Goodbye, hello is great. I read it twice. I would totally read it again, and I rarely do that unless I absolutely have to. But it's it's so great. And if you do the audiobook, definitely do the audiobook because he's got a wonderful voice. And yes, remember to vote. Voting is important. Make sure you're registered. I got to check my, my was registered, but then I saw, I think somebody sent me something about something weird happened in North Carolina. Yeah. Voter registered. Yeah. They un, unregistered like 750,000 people. It was crazy. Oh. So double check your registration if you live in North Carolina. Let me just do that real quick. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we can hop on over to the palate cleanser. I will go ahead and stop recording and I'm going to end 